I unequivocally deny the allegations that I sexually assaulted Jack Wright. After the initial claims that were falsely made by Mason Rizzo, I put out a video that showed evidence and was very well received because people could see the true intention. Once again, I'm having to give context to a video that was put out and immediately deleted. Before I start, I stand with what I said in the last video. I did not sexually assault Jack Wright. We went to the room. Um, I was just chilling on my phone on the bed and she got naked, like completely naked, nothing on, and straddled me when I was literally just chilling on the bed. But I didn't know what to do in like the situation because it was like random and weird. Quickly told her, Sienna, get off. We're just friends. Stop. They're trying to make out with me. They're like just doing a bunch of things to me. And I was, I kept on saying, Sienna, stop, get off. I, I, like I didn't want to like. Now, it's been a while since I talked about a content creator on TikTok. The last TikTok star I talked about was only Jays, but since then, I haven't looked at any other TikTok creators. Until now. A couple months ago, I sent out a poll on my community tab for what content creator I should speak about next. One of the content creators that I had listed was Sienna Mae, but I completely forgot about that video idea until recently when Jack Wright uploaded his side of the story of the situation that the two were involved in, about two weeks ago. Today's video will dive into the manipulation of Sienna Mae's audience and the gaslighting of the situation involving Jack Wright and the others involved. Now, if you don't know who Sienna Mae Gomez is, she's a content creator on TikTok with approximately 13.8 million followers under her belt with 1 billion likes to go along with her follower count. But Sienna Mae also has a spam account that used to be her main account back in the day that also has over 6 million followers. Sienna Mae would download TikTok at the age of 16 years old and one of her first videos that is still visible on her main channel as of today is this video. This video would be uploaded in August of 2020 and it would be the first video uploaded on her Sienna Mae account and it would take off in views and likes almost instantly. Sienna Mae would state that after she uploaded her first video on her account, she would gain around 1 million followers almost every week and a million views almost every three days. It was clear that Sienna Mae hit her mark with her new page and it would only grow with the upcoming months. Eventually, Sienna Mae would hit 10 million followers in November of 2020, just four months after going viral on her account. Her account was appealing to women because of her videos showing off body positivity positivity and breaking the walls of the beauty standards on the internet, so much so that Lizzo would comment under one of her videos saying body positivity has entered the chat. Now at such a young age and an increase in internet fame, it wouldn't take long for Sienna to make her first mistake as a big influencer. In February of 2021, Sienna Mae would drop some merch for her TikTok page. This merch would feature a statement on the front of the shirt saying, did you eat today? Now this had people online heated because that statement could be triggering for some people that have eating disorders. People also felt like Sienna Mae was profiting off of people with eating disorders. Sienna Mae would come out with an apology stating that she was young and that it was just a mistake and I can also agree that young people make mistakes, especially if you get a platform that grows almost instantly overnight. And at that time, we should have given her more time to grow and learn from her mistakes. Here's parts of her apology video that she uploaded on TikTok. Hey guys, I've heard the messages from many of you and I'm deeply sorry for any offense caused. I'm young and I'm still navigating the world and this industry and obviously I will not always get it right the first time. I care deeply about inclusivity and I strive to lead by example. That means listening. With that said, I have heard you and I have removed the merch. I will still be donating all of the proceeds of this line to Teen Line, um, which is a place that many teens can reach out for help. I care about you and thank you for speaking up. Be nice to someone today. We're all struggling with something. After this controversy, she would find herself in a bigger situation, one that would stunt her growth on TikTok and could potentially get her deplatformed in the future. Now, during CNMA's rise to the top, she would spend a good amount of time with the members of the Hype House, an influencer house based in Los Angeles, California. Now, Sienna Mae would get particularly close with one of the members of the house who happened to also be a childhood friend of hers, that member being Jack Wright, a TikTok star who has over 10 million followers. Throughout this time, they would start to create content together and the internet would start to ship the two. They would spend so much time together that when the Hype House was getting its own Netflix series, Sienna Mae would be asked to make an appearance within the show until some pretty big allegations would come out against Sienna in May of 2021, not even a year after creating her account. Now Jack Wright's friend Mason would send out this tweet. In this tweet, he would say, I struggle with seeing a girl praised after telling my best friend to unalive himself and sexually assaulting him numerous times after he set boundaries and then repeatedly wondered why he doesn't like you back. She also has a history of 
verbally abusing people in high school and in LA. She prioritizes the growth of her platform rather than the positive message she represents herself as. Followers should not be an excuse to get away with abusive behavior. You guys all deserve to know the truth about her. He would also say, Jack and James have been my best friends since kindergarten. Eventually, Mason would be asked to take down the tweet, where Jack would upload his own statement stating that he hoped that Sienna would get the help and support that she needs, pretty much confirming the sexual assault allegations. After that tweet, Sienna Mae would upload her first of two videos speaking about the situation. Here's parts of her first video. Keep in mind that these videos have been deleted off of Sienna Mae's YouTube account, so these videos aren't the best quality. I unequivocally deny the allegations that I sexually assaulted Jack Wright. It's currently 2 a.m. and I've been listening to everyone around me tell me what to do all day and what I shouldn't shouldn't say and I basically just want to come on here because I'm not making an apology video. This is more of a statement. I didn't want to bring this online as I said in my statement earlier but this has gotten to a point where my name is being dragged in the mud and I'm going to stand up for myself and tell the truth. I have nothing to apologize for because I did not sexually assault Jack Wright. Jack never confirmed or denied it which makes the situation even worse because he never denied it knowing that it's not true. The allegations were made in a tweet by Mason of sexual assault. Let me be clear one more time, I did not sexually assault Jack Wright. The claims that he made and that James co-signed are completely false. But it wasn't me who sexually assaulted him. And I'm Jack, I'm so sorry that I have to do this to you and I have to out you like this and I never ever ever would have done this to you if it didn't get to the low point that it did where my name was literally being slandered left and right and I'm sorry but for the one time I have to protect myself before I protect you. I was trying to be there for the both of us and trying to keep your name and your personal business out of it but you didn't keep my personal business out of it knowing damn well that your friends were going to post those tweets and I'm sorry but you know I did not sexual assault you. We both know what happened and we both know who it was and we both know that I was not at that gathering that night. I'm so disappointed in you and the people around you because they are letting you misplace your trauma onto me and I'm so sorry that this happened to you. This video would be filled with victim blaming and gaslighting the whole situation to make herself look like the victim. She would state that she didn't sexually assault Jack and that he knows who sexually assaulted him. She would also say that she wasn't even at the gathering that night, but after seeing the May's video, Jack's friend would upload this video. This video is from November 30th, 2020. Okay. As you can clearly see, that is Sienna and that is Jack passed out on the couch, unconscious. This is the first time I met Sienna, and I did not know that they had a fake relationship. This is me in the white hat. I was taking care of Jack while he was unconscious on the couch. Sienna then hops on top of him, and I didn't think nothing of it. I started hearing kissing noises, and I peeked over my shoulder, and it was exactly that. I was so thrown off guard that I had to leave the situation. Whatever their relationship was at the time, obviously this was not right. So I went back and took Sienna off of Jack. Not to mention, when I got closer, I noticed her right hand inappropriately touching his crotch. She was shocked that I pulled her off, and she kept trying to justify what she had just done. I talked to James and Jack the next day about the situation. In this video, you can clearly see Sienna was at the gathering and was making out with Jack Wright while he was unconscious. This would be the start of Sienna's lies. That same night, Sienna would release her last video before she would take a month off of TikTok and YouTube. In this video, you could see her physically upset and angry. She would once again stand with her statement that she did not sexually assault Jack. She would state that since Jack didn't speak on the issue, then it must have been false. She would also state that since the evidence was deleted as well, then it must have been a lie, even though they both said that they were settling this controversy outside of social media. She would talk about how the two were both touchy throughout their friendship, and then she would break down the video that was uploaded by Jack's friend. She would claim that while she was kissing Jack, he was also kissing her back. She would say that he wasn't actually passed out and that her hand was on his thigh. Here's parts of her video. After the initial claims that were falsely made by Mason Rizzo, I put out a video that showed evidence and was very well received because people could see the true intention. Once again, I'm having to give context to a video that was put out and immediately deleted. Before I start, I stand with what I said in the last video, I did not sexually assault Jack Wright. We must always listen to victims, yes. Jack was a victim of sexual assault, but not by me. And I am a victim of continual attempts to cancel me and slander my name with false claims. It will not work. I'm here to clear things up and provide all sides of the story because I have been labeled as a sexual assaulter. If I say nothing, my name continues to be slandered. And trust me, 
I have tried multiple times to take this offline and I am continually undermined by Jack and his inner circle. The initial tweets as well as the video that I am talking about right now have been taken down. If you present evidence of somebody being sexually assaulted, don't you think you should stand by it? And it looks a little suspicious when you immediately remove it from the internet. The reason they are removing it is because they know it will get picked up by these tea sites and put all over our Instagram pages and TikTok for you pages. If someone was sexually assaulted, the evidence is evidence. You don't delete evidence. The way that Jack's friend narrated this video, I admit, looks so weird and looks just like real. But like my last video where I showed comments that were resurfacing and then provided a backstory, not everything is how you see on social media. This is a breakdown of the video. The clip of me kissing Jack, he is also kissing me. I was looking at him face to face. He was kissing me back. Lachlan claims that he was unconscious. If he was unconscious, why did his arm move when you got up? And also, why was he kissing me back? You claim in your video that you hear kissing noises. I started hearing kissing noises and I peeked over my shoulder and it was exactly that. We were. We were kissing. Lachlan also claims that my hand is on Jack's crotch. While it is not, my hand is very visibly on Jack's thigh, upper thigh. This video was very strategically narrated and the clip of Jack asleep after where he actually was unconscious or asleep was after we had just made out. These two clips look terrible edited together, but that is the point. They are edited together. One more point, if Jack was being sexually assaulted in this moment, James, why did you record it? James, you are Jack's twin brother, and I know that if my brother saw me being taken advantage of, he would pick up the person on top of me and beat them to shit, not film it. We both know that the reason you were filming it is because it was uncomfortable and PDA, and it was funny because Jack and I were making out in the middle of the room where other people were. Obviously, Lachlan stood up, of course he's gonna stand up. If someone's making out right next to me, I'm gonna get uncomfortable and I'm gonna stand up. And Lachlan, you claim that you picked me up and told me to get off of Jack after this, after this video was taken. And Jack, if you really feel like I sexually assaulted you, why didn't you report me? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you come out with these claims months ago? Why didn't you stop hanging out with me every day? Why didn't you say anything till now? This has all been claims of your friends. False claims. Now that we are not on good terms, the story has changed. Now, right before these allegations would come out against the anime, her TikTok account would grow to over 15 million followers. But after her two videos and the videos that came out against her, she would lose a couple hundred thousand followers and would drop down to around 14.7 million followers. With all the controversy going on involving CNMA, she would eventually take a month off of creating content. She would come back to content creation and would create one of the weirdest apology videos I've ever seen. That I think a lot of people my age can relate to. I hope this can inspire you. I wanna be wild and young. This video would receive a lot of well-deserved criticism, but eventually with Jack Wright not making a formal statement and him dealing with the situation offline, some people would start to defend CNMA, stating that you can't believe everything you hear on the internet. Eventually, Sienna would start to upload again like nothing happened. And it seemed like Sienna May made it out of the situation with just a slap on the wrist until Jack Wright would upload his video titled What Sienna May Did To Me on January 20th, 2022. This video would receive 20 million views and would put a spotlight on Sienna May and the controversy that happened just a few months prior. Here's parts of Jack's video. This next part of the video is very difficult for me to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time. So the first incident where Sienna crossed boundaries is after filming, we went to the room um, I was just chilling on my phone on the bed and she got naked, like completely naked, nothing on, and straddled me when I was literally just chilling on the bed. But I didn't know what to do in like the situation because it was just, like random and weird. Quickly told her, Sienna, get off. We're just friends. Stop. They're trying to make out with me. They're like just doing a bunch of things to me. And I was, I kept on saying, Sienna, stop, get off. I, I, like I didn't want to like be like aggressive. I didn't want to hurt her, you know? So I, I pulled her off of me. And it took like a couple of tries because I didn't want to be like too rough. And I went out of the room and that was like the end of it. The next morning where she was like, I'm so sorry for doing that. That was, I, I don't know what went through my head. 
I had to clarify again that I didn't like her that way. We were just friends. She said sorry, that was it. After that, these type of things kept happening. She would do something and I would forgive her and she said it wouldn't happen again and we would go on and making fun videos. After all those type of things kept on happening, the Hawaii incident happened where I was passed out unconscious almost like the whole night. She got on top of me, took advantage of me, groped me. I'm, I'm so glad they pulled her off of me and honestly, I'm glad that they have evidence. After Shanna found out about the video, she said sorry. She said if this got out, she would be done. That is horrible and she's working on boundaries and she was seeking therapy. Um, and shortly after, there was a party. I was taking pictures with a couple other girls. We took a picture, Sienna came in, started screaming at me, got mad at the girls, told me to come to her room to talk to me. She started screaming at me and I was like, Sienna, there's no reason for you to be mad when you're getting with other guys in LA. I can't just take a simple picture with a couple girls. That's when she pulled me in and grabbed me and tried to make out with me. And I got pissed and told her to leave. I wanted to stay at the party and she kind of had already been yelling at every single person in the party. So two friends wanted to take her home and while the car was moving, she jumped out of the car, rolled and said, I have to get back to Jack. So I ran back to the house and I was like hiding from her and I was just waiting for her parents to finally pick her up. Looking back now, I don't know why I stayed friends with her, stayed around her. I truly thought she was gonna change for some reason. I feel like she, she'd she say she had so much love for me and that she truly cared for me. And then the next night she would do something like that. She knew I had those boundaries. So when I was at my most like vulnerable state, like when I was arguing, getting, getting heated, or when I was asleep or passed out, that's when she would take advantage of me because she knew I was at my most vulnerable state. When I'm awake, I hated it. I hated that touch. I hated any intimacy with her because I knew we were just friends. I didn't want that from her. And especially with like the past couple things she did, I, I didn't want nothing, I didn't want anything to do with that. Over the next couple of months, I was stuck in this toxic cycle. I was stuck with her crying to all my friends, saying that I didn't like her back and why don't I like her back? And she would get mad at me for not caring about her as much as she, she cared about for me but she'd also be doing these things to me. I would go see other guys in LA. So it was like, couldn't win at all. I couldn't get out of this. She would constantly come to my house, remember my door codes. It, like it got to the point where I had to like start screaming at her to like get out of my house. Cause I was so sick of her just like breaking into my house. I would wake up and see her car just sitting outside at like two in the morning. She would break into my house. And when I was sound asleep, she'd come to my room and I'd wake up to her hand in my pants. And it wasn't like the only time it happened too. I was so like used to it. I was so used to it that it, I don't know, it was, it was just like normal. So now we're caught up to when everything went public, when Mason posted his tweet. Since everything was brought to social media, multiple guys came out to me and said that Sienna did similar things to them. And basically, I'm sh I'll show the text right now. I asked all of them for permission to post, crossed out all their names. We don't want her to hurt anybody else. We don't want anyone to go through that experience. At the time, it feels humiliating. You feel like you have no power, you have no, no control in the situation, you just, you feel, it's, I don't know, just, it's horrible. I just want to start off by saying that I didn't stay silent in this situation over these last couple months. I, I talked to my friends, my family, my parents, counselors, and I was able to process everything. I don't think I'll ever be the same person I was before Sienna. Sienna Mae would end up responding to Jack in a quote diary that she uploaded to her website. So I read it, so you guys don't have to. Pretty much she goes on to say that the allegations are still false and that she is sorry to the victims of sexual assault that she may have offended with her being very offensive of what she was saying. She also goes on to state that her lawyers sent papers out to Jack's lawyers for defaming her character. Even though she says that she wants to take accountability for her actions, she still doesn't in this diary. She also points out death threats to her family, her friends, and also to herself. That's what she starts off with and it makes me feel like she wants whoever is reading this to feel sympathetic towards the situation that she caused before they continue to read. She also goes on to state that she didn't know there were boundaries even though in Jack's video he states that he went over those boundaries countless times with her. This isn't a great apology from Sienna Mae but it is better than her interpretive dance apology video that she did in July. Now since Jack's video came out Sienna hasn't posted it on her TikTok account and the 14.9 million followers that she once had dropped all the way down to 13.8 million followers. She would also turn off the comments on all of her videos. This is a big situation that Sienna Mae was able to dodge for a while and because she lied so many times to her audience her fans just can't 
trust her, which made them leave so quickly. Sienna Mae manipulated and gaslighted her audience to believe her version of the story. And when Jack came out with his side of the story while proving everything she said to be wrong, her audience quickly unfollowed. I think that's what happens when you try to act like your audience is very dumb and you also think that the truth will never come out. I think this is a prime example of people not believing the victim if the victim is a male. I'm happy for Jack for getting the confidence to release his video and also getting a bunch of positive support within his community. For Sienna Mae, she has a lot to reflect on and she still needs to own up to the situation and I don't think she ever will. This could lead to her losing her platform, but that's only up to TikTok to see how they respond to the situation. She also could be losing her platform on YouTube, but again, that's also up to YouTube to see how they respond to the situation. But anyways, this has been the downfall of Sienna Mae. If you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe we are back on the grind with this channel and we are going back to our regular twice a week uploads thank you so much for watching and for your constant support and i cannot wait to see you guys in the next video